Hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Amy Kardashian, not Kardashian. On this show, we educate and empower humanity. I bring experts, uh, people who have uh, real life stories to empower you and encourage you to take action towards a better life. Today, I have a great uh, guest with me. His name is Ken Roshan, right? That is and, correct. Uh, and Ken, he's going to help us and um, show us how can we benefit from social uh, media to uh, uh, to em embrace our life. Yeah, our best self. Our best self. But more than that, uh, Ken is going to share with us a lot of insights and let us know how he get to where he is and i am so excited to hear from him because kenny is bringing uh, uh, communities together he does have this project keep smiling all the leaders from every community from the united states uh, he put them in this book just to get us to know each other. And by the way, I am in this book too. <laughs> I'm so happy for that. And also he works with uh, the 1% of uh, successful people uh, in the world, top successful people in the world. Is that correct? That is and, correct. And uh, Ken, he published many books, 22 books, and uh, published other other books, right? I've Seventy-two written, books. I've written twenty-two, and I have published about another eighty. And a, another eighty books. Mm -hmm. So welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Glad the to show. Here. It's so exciting to have you, because you have established a lot. So not only you establish a lot, you are helping communities now. You're paying it forward. Before we have questions for you, I want to know what really inspired you. What is your story? that inspire you to do what you're doing? Well, I think when you're living life without a purpose-driven life, you're just going through life. And my mom had Alzheimer's, and in being a caretaker with my dad, I really started questioning, why am I losing my biggest fan? What am I gonna have on my tombstone? What is life about? And over the next couple of years, I really got clear that I don't know what kind of impact I was making in the world. So as corny as this sounds, I, I, I love photography, I love events, I love people. And I thought, wow, if I could go to events and find top leaders and create viral campaigns and amplify what they're doing so great, then it won't be a secret anymore who the great people are, who the positive people are. And I have a, a, a very simple feeling that in the world, the more positive people we amplify, the more positive the world gets. So I took it upon myself to really make it about leadership and influencers that have positive impact, positive messages, and are really telling a truth that we need to hear. There's too many lies in media. There's too many lies that are being told to the, the general public because they're being fed misinformation. And so when you have people that are brave enough to stand up and say, hey, this is bad for you. Stop mm -hmm. doing this. And this is really the light or this is the truth. Those people need all the support and encouragement they can get. So what did you do before that? I was a DJ for 35 years. Wow. And I played weddings. And you know, in, in that time that I was doing it before my mom had Alzheimer's, that was my life. It made sense. I thought, you know, I get paid to have people celebrate their most, you know, loving day of their life, the biggest day of their life, until they have a child. And so it made sense. But after my mom passed of Alzheimer's, it didn't make sense anymore. So what is it? Because you were almost like dealing with people, making people happy. Mm -hmm. You were surrounded around people who's having fun, obviously, right? Sure. And, uh, but you wanted to take it further, right? You want to take it to the next level? Yes, because what I was doing in the wedding scene was really celebrating someone's love and life, but it was a personal life. And what I want to do is go more towards the leadership, and I wanted to go more towards the people that are really impacting the world. And, you know, when this happened, I had not written a book yet. Wow. And when this happened, I hadn't done a lot of things. I hadn't spoken on stages. And when you have a purpose-driven life that you do believe is a God calling, it's amazing how much courage you get. I, I will say that I was very comfortable in front of a mic, but to just shift me, can you imagine being known for 35 years as a DJ? No one knows you as anything else. And then within a year or two, everyone knows you as this social media photographer, as a speaker, author, and they don't even know you're a DJ. It was like that life didn't exist anymore. It didn't exist anymore. And it really says how impactful social proof and social media is because my identity transformed within a year. I did 330 events my first year. I volunteered for any event that touched my heart, like March of Dimes, uh, cystic fibrosis, Crohn's disease, anything that was about research to make people's life better, obviously Alzheimer's being one of them, autism being one of them. I just said, hey, I'd like to help you with your event. I'd like to market it. I'd like to promote it for you. 
Because if I could prove that it made an impact, then I knew that was my calling. If I couldn't make an impact, why do it? You know, I have a, I have a quote, giving is living. Exactly. And, and what I mean by that, it's not necessarily sometimes we have to give our money. Sometimes you have to give an opportunity to someone. You help them shine. Mm -hmm. you, help, you bring them out, whatever they're doing, you appreciate them. And you feel alive when you do that. I do. And when I met you, it was because of uh, just a happenstance that Andrea Adams Miller said, I need to meet one of my clients, and she's someone you need to meet. She causes smiles in the world. And I said, well, gosh, that what an opportunity. I meet you, and you're just, you have the spirit that just radiates Thank all this you. positive. And I knew you had a great story, and so you're going to be on my show later. And it's, it's a way of helping good people get their message out. And for the people that don't have hope, it gives them hope and it gives them inspiration that you can really create your life. Absolutely. I, 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 see, that's that. I, I truly believe so many things come, uh, we don't like pain, but it comes from pain. There is something mm -hmm. good comes out of pain. If you, you know, when you're going through pain, something good come out of it. Look how much your life has changed, how many people you're inspiring and touching and changing their life just put that smile on their face. Uh, that When you came over and you said, hold this and smile, it just helped me to smile and remember that I need to smile. Right. So bringing the smile out of us uh, uh, meant a lot you know, for me and I'm sure means a lot to other people. So when we come back, we're gonna learn more about your books and what you're doing to the community and to the world. Okay, we'll be right back. Thank you for calling Denim Revival. Hate to say goodbye to your favorite jeans? Well, now you don't have to, because Denim Revival is here for you. Mill us your jeans and our professionals will fix it right up. We offer you all kinds of alteration services, including invisible repairs, let outs, taperings, and original hemming, or even have your own custom made jeans. Quoted the best denim repair shop by GQ, Vogue Magazine, and LA Times. Denim Revival, your search for alteration and repair ends here. And we are back with Ken and we're having great conversation talking about communities, putting smile on your face and really turning your obstacles that you went through or challenges that losing your mother into positive. And that is amazing when you know you come out and you teach someone, you're going through obstacles and challenges, but you could turn it around to a beautiful thing. And correct? it is a choice. It is so a choice. Tell me, what is a leader to you? A leader is someone that has a following and they inspire them to do things they wouldn't otherwise have done. So, for instance, I, I think the leadership at Chick-fil-A, it's a great experience where you go in and you can almost count every single time that you're going to be treated like a wonderful person, you're going to be getting a smile, you're going to be respected, and what a difference that is from other chains and franchises. So I, I think leadership is about creating a positive environment so you can be very productive, very efficient, and have massive impact. So some people, they say, well, I don't feel I'm a leader. There is a lot of people told me this. They told me, I don't feel I'm a leader. I am just me. I, I'm just a worker. I'm not a leader. But I believe there is leader with each one of us, and each leader leads differently. Do you believe that? I agree. Unfortunately, their belief system is stopping them from proving that they are that leader. And I don't know... I went through ROTC at Johns Hopkins, and I think some of those skill sets that I learned there maybe have played into the fact, but really it's having, I think, prayer and conversation with God about what you're supposed to be doing with your life and getting congruent with that, because that doesn't need to be the word leadership anymore. It needs to be more the word causing something. Causing something, just causing someone to smile. Yeah. You are leading them, and that the right, you're leading them to smile. Sure. So leadership, some people have an idea about leadership that you have to be very successful, and you have to do so much in the world to be a leader, but you could just actually lead your family. 
uh, re lead your uh, husband, lead your, you know, do PTA. something in your community. Yeah, right. You know, a leader, it's a leader uh, doesn't have to be a president in, all, in order to be a leader, right? Exactly. And you look at uh, other people that confuse the amount of abundance that you have in your life, i.e. financial, mm -hmm. as to whether you can be a great leader or not. A, a great leader can come from any walk of life and cause actually more impact than someone that has more money than they know what to do with because they don't know how to lead. And Absolutely. a great example would be like Gandhi or Mother Teresa. They would never had the focus of money. They had the focus of actually impact. And many writers and inventors, they died poor, right? Literally, and now we still talk about them because they left something in the in the world. They 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 made a difference. So what I'm world. doing to really change the game mm -hmm. is tell the secret. So so many people that want to be a leader and they're doing great leadership, maybe they don't. They're not known for their books. They're not known for their speeches. They're not known for their cause or their movement. And what my job that I put on myself is. Amplify it, amplify goodness. And it's on the back of every one of my Keep Smiling cards. We've given out almost, we're going on 1.2 million cards that we've given out in the last 12 years. And wow. I met a man named Barry Shore and he gave me this card. And this is about three or four years ago. He gave me the card and I could not believe, I'd never met a human being that was so saintly. And I said, why are you giving me this? And he says, because I want you to remember to smile. And I was smiling. I said, wow, wow I want to know more about what you're doing. I said, with me amplifying goodness, and this is a keep smiling card, could this be any more of you know, something Go falling right in my lap? Yeah. And I started taking pictures of people with smiles, and I realized that this collection of That is God spirit, right it there. Is, it is. You know, sometimes people, they don't understand how God speaks to us through other people, sure. literally. And, and just, you have to be aware and welcoming that. That's amazing. I never knew that. That's how you started. It's how I started the Keep Smiling movement, mm. definitely. And, and this man is a, a very brilliant guy. You know when you try and raise money for a cause, you're always asking money, hey Amy, I'm doing this for Alzheimer's, can you, you know, help support it? Well, he came up with an app called Delighted. And Delighted, you can download on your phone, you can buy Amazon, Southwest, you can buy anything you're buying normally, and 5% or 2.5% goes towards a cause effortlessly. So wow. he's trying to raise a billion dollars. I shouldn't say he's trying. He is committed to raising a billion dollars with simply an application of how we spend money. Oh, we, we already spend it. What's exactly. the, what's the, uh, the it, name again? It, it is Delighted, D-Y-L-T-E-D. Delighted. And I will make sure you get that, uh, nice. uh, uh, that website so you can actually post this as part yeah, of the... Yeah, because you're buying things anyway. Exactly. That's beautiful. And think about a, an organization that says, I have 40,000 people that work here and we, we really want to help fix X. And so the whole organization is given a credit card and they're spending normally and that's all going to They're fix going it. And we're talking it. hundreds of thousands of dollars being generated just by nice. spending. So very nice. Very big. So this one, how many, how many cities, how many states you have? Well, because God has brought me here for so many great conventions, leadership, uh, you know, so many amazing events in Las Vegas. This is only my third. I've done a DC, Maryland. I've done a Baltimore and Ve Vegas is my third. And that's a prototype. So it's rather thin at this point, but with your contacts in this show, I am challenging people to submit people that they're uh, inspired by, that they want me to honor. When I put someone in that book, I'm actually honoring them that they cause smiles. And guess what they also cause? Abundance. Uh, you because know, when you are smiling, yeah. you're attracting to the universe positivity and you're attracting more people that want to have a better world. So guess what happens? You're starting to do business absolutely, together. Absolutely, absolutely. We should go on Facebook and then say, okay, we're chat. <laughs> how about you do challenging on Facebook? Challenge that. I think it's you know a good how idea. they do have challenging water, or whatever they put. Let's do challenging for uh, a smiling challenge. Okay. Who we'll do smiles the smile. most? Yeah, we'll say who smiles most, and whoever doesn't play this game with us will punch you in the face. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes them laugh, right? That makes that will make them laugh. <laughs> that will make them laugh. But th this is a not only this is what it's doing. For example, when you told me that you want me to hold this, mm -hmm. it meant something different than just smiling. It brought smile to my face and lift me up myself because this way I could serve better, right? Exactly. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to appreciate the people who work hard to help other people shine. Right. And uh, that means a lot because usually we forget about ourselves. <laughs> I really forget about me and forget about what, what I'm doing how, how many things that I'm helping other authors to shine and messages, but that 
kind of like, oh, okay, that's about my smile. That's and, and there's a spiritual piece to it too. Yeah. And when you think about when you are completely vulnerable and you're letting your smile out, your eyes light up, you are at your, uh, your there's utmost. There's no block. There's no block. And so what happens when people see this photo and they don't see Don't tell you, me what happened. I won't. Why we, don't we go to a break? Let's, go to, let's, go, let's to a break. go to a break. Let's go to a break. Okay. Well, we, we will be right back and we're going to tell you what's going to happen. How's that sound? We'll be right back. are back with Ken. We are having so much fun on the show, really. You, you're lifting me up, so that's <laughs> great. Okay. Let's tell them what happened. Well, when, I have sh when I've given the car to someone, first of all, sometimes they are apprehensive about letting their full spirit out. Mm -hmm. And so I take a picture and I turn the photo and I show it to them. They go, let's take it again. And then all of a sudden they light up. And when they light up, they're, feel they're feeling really the God's touch of what love is because they're loving themselves and they're showing that they want to love the world. So, and they relax for that one, oh, one second. And I this have been, like, the biggest compliment I've ever gotten is people saying, you capture the spirit, oh, the human spirit. I mean, that's, oh, that's, that's gorgeous because it's someone actually in love in that moment. And you know, uh, technology, sometimes we complain about what's happening in the world because the kids are not really spending time with the parents. The parents are not spending time with the kids anymore. Mm -hmm. They're on the phone and everything. Yes, there is that part of it, but if we were using technology in the right way, it, it makes a huge difference. You know, before you take a picture, you never were able to see it right away. That's right. Now, by seeing it, you're, they're smiling more. They're, and then also you're able to connect with people from all over the world from where you're at. So there is something good about that, right? Well, there's something great about it, and I'm, and I'm glad you said that because it, it takes me to the direction of leveraging and social proof. So think about you are one of 99 people other than you that are in the Las Vegas book for Causing Smiles in Las Vegas. Guess what happens? All 99 are telling about you and the other 99, so that's leveraging. Then you get to know each other, mm -hmm. so something magical happens there. And most importantly, whoever's story is the story that how they cause smiles in the world is being actually passively promoted by everyone in the book. So you have tens of thousands, if not 100,000 people. Getting They're, to know you. Yeah, some of the books I've done, the influencer book I, I did recently, has 500 million people following the people that are inside that book. That's, that's an outstanding number. But if you look at someone like you know, John Travolta, or just people that have 12 million people following, you add all, all these millions, it is a very large number 100 people could do that, yeah. that are making that kind of impact in the world. Absolutely. So that's what I want to do with Vegas. And I want to do it with any metropolitan city. There's, there's some amazing cities in this country that I, li I live in a city that is actually one of the toughest cities. Baltimore is unfortunately the number one murder capital. Wow. And my, uh, what better place to live in to, to, to show how a shift can happen. And that's Absolutely. what I'm committed to. I'm committed that's to this. That's nice. That's very nice. So uh, we're not done with the interview, but I really encourage you to uh, think about your city where you're living. And plus there's, there's 13 other kids. themes. There's the legacy theme, the celebrity theme, the influencer okay. theme. So we have all these themes. For instance, let's say in Vegas they had uh, something they wanted to do for just uh, kids. They could make a Keith Smiling book that raised money for a kids foundation. Nice. So all the books actually split the, uh, it's not split, it gives 50% of the whole cost of the book to that foundation. So they can get buy it from you, from your website? Or, or the organization can buy them and the, sell them yeah. and, and then they get 50%. And then they get for themselves, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, let's move on a little bit about, you started with this or you started with publishing? I started with writing my first book, which was uh, about networking. Okay, which you don't have it probably. I probably yeah. have it. We can show it at the next break. That's okay. <laughs> and, uh, and so that book was my first book. It came out in 2009. And I had people say, it's a very good book. Teach me how I could write a book. And so I started thinking, you know what? There's not a lot of courses on publishing to make money and publishing to make impact. There is obviously publishing. So publishing the way publishing is done nowadays is more printing. Like yes. just stick it on Amazon and just print it. Yeah. There's almost no marketing being done. There's almost no social proof being done. There's almost no strategy being done. And I learned that people were missing like the 80% of where you need to focus your time, your money. So can you imagine putting out the best book in the world, having no marketing behind it? It's a dead it's, book. It's, it's a dead, dead book, yeah. Right. However, here's just to make the point really extreme, doing an average book, but you have the best marketing system you've ever seen, it's going to blow out that book that was the best Absolutely. book. Absolutely. No doubt about so it. So yeah. I got committed to meeting people that had good hearts, 
good messages and saying, I will build a campaign around your book. And I said, this is the new publishing. Publishing is having that book show up and never dying. See, yes. most books, they have a life cycle of three months, if that. And you hear all these people, I'm an Amazon bestseller, and you say, I've never heard of you. Yeah. Never seen you before. They Google Facebook. They don't see any covers. They don't see anybody holding the book. They don't see anybody saying, this book's important to me. This book changed my life. They may see some reviews on Amazon, but I'm talking about really seeing. So you actually help people right. to write it and publish it for them? Yes. That, you know, you uh, take them through the process? Most leaders want to write a book. 85% of leaders want to write a book. Mm -hmm. Only about 1% or 2% do it because they don't know how to get past the fear or they don't know how to get past the don't know. Well, it's a lot of work it to is. write a book. It's a big responsibility. And, and if you process, have someone that mentors right? you and they... Unless you know what you're doing. You have somebody to help you. Exactly. When I did my first book, that took me two or three rewrites, and it was about a year, and about mm -hmm. $20,000, so I spent a fortune. The second book took a fraction of that and took a fraction of time. I now write a book every three months, and I'm committed to keeping that. Forget because about the you have a system. Exactly, you and keep smiling. I now have them coming out every week. Wow. So it's really getting exciting because every week I'm working on three or four where they're being staged to come out one after the other. And that's, that's it's making the most difference it, it, in, yes. in and I'm, life. And I'm so happy it is. Yeah. And because of so many reasons. One is I've captured these people, they touched my heart, and now I'm able to memorialize them and in memorializing them. People, I mean, you wouldn't believe when I photograph, I'll get the book and I'll hold it up and someone will photograph them on my, on my chest. Yeah. And then I, I put the photos on the internet, I tag each person. Next thing I know, the book is being seen by 30, 40,000 people. Tell wow. me another system that does that. Wow, wow, it's amazing, it's amazing. So what you're saying here, social media it helped you really to connect with people. Well, more social proof. Social proof, yeah. And I, and I say the distinction is media is simply just putting content out. Okay. Proof is putting out like top 1% content where you have proof. So here's a great way of putting it. If you're doing great things in the world, does the world know it? Uh, so not necessary. Usually not. Yeah. Because 99% of people don't know what social proof is or how mm -hmm. to leverage it correctly. So they may meet the president, they may meet uh, someone that actually would make them a ton of money if people said, oh my gosh, he's working with all these people, I want to work with him or her. And so with social proof, you set up a campaign. And if you look at our last two presidents, they both won with a social proof yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, it, you can't be age. without social, you know, how to use it really the exactly. right way. So what you're saying is uh, use social media the right way. Is that what you're saying? Yes, in a campaign sense that proves okay. you're doing really important things in the world and you can prove it over and over and over again. So it's consistent. And what is consistency? Consistency is actually integrity. When something's inconsistent, it's out of integrity. So when you can nice. show that a campaign is that pure message and it never, every time you look it up, you'll see that pure message, then you have someone you can bet on. Yeah. It's almost like um, if you go to a restaurant to eat, you want to be you want to experience the same food every time you go there to eat. You want the consistent, you want to yes. always be the, the, that, have the same feeling and has, uh, when you connect with that person. So what you're saying, if you have a message, you have to continuously uh, put your message out there. Exactly. So or in a message, business or whatever might be for you. Right. And so when a message is really strong and it's consistent and you see it's powerful because it keeps going, what happens eventually is Malcolm Gladwell's Tipping Point, which is the, the book about how when it happens over and over and over again, finally the world says, oh my gosh, I will share this for you. You don't need to work anymore. This is brilliant what you're doing. And then the world tells the world. Yes. And you but get to step But be consistent. Back. Like if you're, you're an author or speaker, be in that, the same uh, uh, journal. Talk yes. about the same kind get of thing. Get committed to your Commit message. Yeah. Don't, don't start to sell shirts and hats. Mm -hmm. Right. And, right, and also don't get caught doing something that's yeah, it's making not, you a doesn't hypocrite. make sense. Right. Yeah, hypocrite. Yeah, uh, we're, there is more we're gonna learn. <laughs> okay, we're not going anywhere. We still have some time. So when we Good. come back, we're gonna talk more about how to use uh, social proof and in uh, helping you transform your life, like it did to you. So we'll be right back. Snap on dentures will change your life. And at Smiles Today Dental, we now offer the lowest price in town. Mini dental implants can stabilize your loose dentures permanently. Call Smiles Today Dental for a free consultation. And we are back with Ken. Ken, I'm so enjoying my interview with you. I don't want it to finish. 
We're not going to let it finish. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, because you're, you're giving us a lot of good information and you're inspiring us. You have a great energy about you, like you're telling your truth. Mm -hmm. You could, I could feel that you're telling your truth. You know what you're talking about. And um, it, it just and it gives you that feeling of comfortable to listen to you. Give us some more. <laughs> well, you, you're actually bringing up a, a wonderful point. When you see someone that has never spoken before and they get on stage and everyone falls in love with them and they're just speaking their truth. Yeah. And that's the that most beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'll tell you, if, if you're not speaking your truth, you're nervous. So you, you can't be congruent with actually peace. Yeah. I wanted, I don't know if the audience has seen the keep smiling, but it, sa it says keep yeah, smiling. Show it to them. Sure. Here but you go. what's more important is this is how you hold it. And or, you can hold it to the side too. <laughs> so if someone want to do this um, in their city, they can right. take pictures and send it to you or you have to take them? I don't have to take them, but they have to be taken by a professional photographer because okay. we do want it to be a professional publication. You want, it, you want them to look good in the book. Exactly. Right. Yes. And then what they do it, and uh, they could, uh, under their picture, you say what they do and who they are. Right? Yeah, there's their four names. components. They get to write a quote about how smiles, how they create smiles or how smiles that, affected them how or affected, affected but they can pick else? a quote they make okay. their own quote okay. then there's a QR code in the printed books that take you to the fan page or the business page of you know Facebook and then there is also the title of how you create smiles what you do in the world so nice. and then of course the photo we're in, we always encourage you to be yourself so have fun I mean there's there's all kind I there's a gentleman Ken Courtright who held two cards up and I said wow oh, you just did the, the, the double and, yeah. he, and he likes breaking molds so that was perfect for him beautiful <laughs> beautiful so let's talk about more about books I think uh, this is this is looks pretty nice here um, is a very nice, very nice. <laughs> okay so did you help uh, write it uh, like did they you publish this I am publishing it. It has been published before, okay. and we are going to have a new cover. But I'll tell you a little story with this one because this is this tell actually us. tells the power of events. So, okay. I met Jennifer Hammond at the Marketers Cruise, and it was a it was 400 people on a ship. They're they're talking about what they're doing in life, that, and marketing is everything. So they're talking about how to market things, and she is very committed to veterans. And after seeing her, I think it was two or three times on a cruise, I said, "You're doing this book. Let me help you market it." So I marketed it. And in doing the marketing, she's seen my commitment to actually keeping the book alive. Nice. So we are talking about a new cover, adding all kinds of new content. And that's the other thing that's important about a book. When you make a book, get the book out on deadline imperfect because mm. it's better than holding the book forever because it'll never be perfect. It'll never, ever be perfect. Yeah, so right. I applaud her because she put that book out. It has done extremely well, Amazon bestseller. But beyond that, she has had the veteran community embrace it. And she has had the veteran community embrace it so much. She said, hey, this will make the book better. Put this in the book. So she's making the book better because they're telling she's her. She's listening exactly. to them what they want. Yeah, so yeah. what better time to have. It's about them, what they're looking for, right? <clears throat> exactly. So nice. I, every time I get a book done, I say, this is the deadline. I'm getting the book. And by the way, I knew I was going to be on your show today. Guess when the book had to be done? Before the show. Here we go. That Vegas book is not perfect. It's a prototype. That's but, fine. You but have you to know start. the concept yeah. of it because it's printed. Absolutely. And you also know my commitment because I printed it. Because you never finish. You know, you never exactly. really finish. Uh, uh, you can't wait until you finish. You never finish. I want to talk a little bit about this uh, children because you know I have grandkids. I do. <laughs> and uh, my grandkids, I have older grandkids and younger ones. The younger ones, they love books. They do. So tell me a little bit about this book. Well, first of all, uh, kids love books when the people that they admire love books. So okay. it, it's interesting when you say, I want my son or daughter to read more. Well, then read more, because when they see you're reading more, they associate that's a great habit to have. Mm -hmm. But this book right here is my fourth book to my son. It is my favorite at this point, And it's my book called Kenny's Favorite Things, but it's really my favorite things about Kenny. Oh, okay. So um, I love it when I see my son pray and have gratitude for food. It may nice. not necessarily be his favorite, but there's a nice little, uh, you know, animation in there showing us all praying for our food and I showed him a video the other day of kids that were starving in a third world country and mm -hmm. he's five years old he couldn't relate to it but I'm planting seeds that he does seeds. have so many great things to be grateful for and you'd shared earlier in the uh, before we got on the air that you were sharing your story and how yeah. it, it really changed your grand kids, uh, I think it was your 12 year old yeah, grand, yeah. how she looked at life. He as, read it, yeah. yeah. He read the book and then he said I'm going to appreciate the, the breath right. I'm taking. And that really inspired me to really publish my book. Yeah, the last thing I wanted was for my mom to pass of Alzheimer's. But in her passing, I appreciated life more. Yeah. And we talked about the pain. So when you have a pain happen, you need to look at, 
what am I going to do with this pain? Am, am I going to use it to empower my life yes. or am I going to let it to defeat my life? And I think Tony Robbins has the best depiction in a story where he just very briefly says, hey, two people get shot in Vietnam, they both lose their leg, one becomes this powerful speaker, this other one becomes a drug yeah. addict. They, they made the meaning of that different. Differently, yeah. 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 I always say uh, life either uh, was going to break me or make me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a decision I had to make. Right. But not everybody's capable of doing that. Uh, it happened that I believe in God and it really, I think I everyone allowed, is capable. Yeah. I think I, everyone is capable. It, they're capable of doing it, but they, some people, they need direction more than other people. Okay. And then they have to find the right people who can help them to go there. Um, I found God <clears throat> and then that's how I was able to really overcome a lot of things in my life. So. Yes, it doesn't mean if the other person didn't make it, they can't, but they, they haven't found maybe the right uh, match for themselves. Well, or the right motivation. Yeah, and, and the I'll, right motivation. I'll just show you, this book here is called uh, Quick Solutions to World Problems. Look at oh, how thin it is. Quick Solutions. Look at how thin it is. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's four pages. It's, yeah. Okay? So if I can read something on the back here. Sure. This is something that's very important to me, and I read it almost every presentation I do, and it goes like this. We can go back to the beginning of time and learn bullying, gossip, inequality, and judging are just some forms of discrimination that has held back mankind. The reason we argue, fight, and go to war is because we don't know how to appreciate differences. The book takes, this book takes on a problem that if unsolved could cause the extinction of our species. My goodness, you're and doing I, a lot of good things in the and, world. And that's just a little paragraph. And what I want to share with you is what's funny about discrimination and bullying is it's a lack of knowledge and it's fear just hitting you and you mm -hmm. have to overcome it. So this is discrimination and the solution is just accept people nice and that's how simple it's life so is simple. and that's why i want to go it? back to what you were saying with whether someone's capable or whether they need help it's really defined on whether they are committed to it and morgan freeman who is one of the best actors most people would say i just saw a video of his recently and he said you know people use their circumstances as an excuse for why they're not where they want to be he says i was born in mississippi bum you know what and it took a long time to get where I am today. He said in his closing remarks, the bus goes by every single day. Are you gonna mm -hmm. get on the bus or not? Or not, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. It's just take that action, Right. take that step. Well, we're running out of time, no. but I'm gonna have you back. <laughs> when you come back to Vegas, you're gonna promise me you'll be back on my show. I will. Uh, but uh, I'm sure they can, I wanted to talk to, uh, about, talk to you about the 1%, but I'm sure they could find out more about you and about your show. You have a uh, radio show yeah, Amplified and Life. a lot of things that you're doing. Just give us your website. Um, this is your camera. Okay. And then you can give us your website there. Well, that card says BEU, B U, and that is for Big Events USA. And we believe that when you're actually operating at the top 1% and you're committed to being a top 1% person, you're finally being you. So www.bigeventsusa.com. Nice. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. For I look forward to being on your show very, very soon. soon. Yes. Right? Okay. And uh, for you, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay focused on your purpose.